I'm Ian Somerville and in the second video on critical national infrastructures I'm going to be talking about infrastructure dependability. Recall that dependability is about safety, security, reliability and availability and I'm going to be looking at three factors that influence the safety particularly and the availability of national infrastructures. These are the ownership and the funding of these infrastructures and the dependencies between different parts of the infrastructure. What we find with infrastructure ownership is that it's incredibly complex. If we look at infrastructure in terms of physical infrastructure, there's gas, there's electricity, there's telecommunications. These are all owned by different companies. So we have the Infrastructure as a whole, infrastructure in the large, has this complex ownership structure. But even when we look at individual elements of the infrastructure, we find there's an equally complex ownership. What has happened over time is that government controlled infrastructure, say a telecommunications network or a railway, has been privatised. It's sometimes the case that this privatisation has led to an internationalization of the infrastructure so that international companies have bought elements of the infrastructure in different countries so that we have a situation where a failure of the infrastructure in one country say the UK has to be dealt with by a company which is headquartered and which runs under a different set of, of, of rules and regulations in another country say in France. Take, for example, the railway system in the UK. 20 years ago or so, we had a, a single railway owner the, called British Rail, and British Rail owned the, in, the, the rolling stock, that's the trains, the carriages and so on. They owned the stations, they owned the railway lines themselves, they owned the signalling system, uh, and everything to do with railways was owned by a single owner. Now, it was believed that we could make this more efficient through privatisation. And so the system was split up so that there's a separate company that now owns the railway lines and signalling systems. A separate company that owns the trains, or rather there's several, several companies that own the trains and even more companies who own the right to run train services. They hire or they rent the trains from the train ownership companies and they run these on the railway lines provided by the, the, the network company. Now, when you have a complex system like this, and this is quite common in other elements of the infrastructure, such as electricity, where there is a, a separate ownership for the distribution system and the generation systems, you need to have some overall government regulation that ensures the system can be run in a safe way. Now the consequences of the distributed or fragmented ownership structure for critical infrastructure are that there is no single body that is responsible for the dependability, the reliability and the safety of the system. The responsibility for system safety and dependability lies with the regulator and with all of the different companies that are involved. Furthermore, a, a, an important consequence of privatisation is that cost and budget become very important factors as well as the, the safety and dependability of the system. The companies involved have a responsibility to the shareholders to generate a profit and so they have to think very carefully about how much things cost, even if these are safety related. Fragmented ownership also means that they, there is a tendency to blame other companies when things go wrong. There's a, there's a wish to evade responsibility because responsibility when things go wrong carries with it the the notion that there will be some compensation to be paid to someone. Now, what that means is to those who have been affected by the failure, 
uh, it takes much longer for them to get compensation and it also takes longer to make decisions on system changes that avoid failures or, or that introduce ways to avoid failures that have already occurred. Turning now to infrastructure funding. Infrastructure is expensive. Governments and companies are reluctant to incur the high capital costs that are involved in infrastructure replacement and they tend to put these off as much as they possibly can. Across the developed world we have a situation where the, our, our infrastructure, particularly our physical infrastructure, is in need of replacement. There was huge investment in that physical infrastructure, in electricity, in gas, in roads and railways in the 1950s and 1960s, and much of this now needs to be replaced. But finding the cost of that replacement, especially in difficult economic times, is very difficult. And there's not a great deal of political payback from replacing infrastructures. The high costs of infrastructure means there's a reluctance to invest in what you might call preventative maintenance, trying to fix problems before the result in incidents or accidents. And there's much more a tendency to wait and think till things go wrong and then deal with them. Now this can lead to accidents. More commonly, what it leads to is to unavailability. Problems are discovered and things have to be shut down until they're repaired. Infrastructure dependencies are where one part of the infrastructure depends in some way on some other part of the infrastructure or some other completely different infrastructure. And <clears throat> they're very important because what we have found is that failures in one part of the infrastructure can sometimes lead to other failures in other infrastructures or elsewhere in the infrastructure which are which were very difficult to predict. This diagram was produced by the US Department of Energy and what it shows is the key role that electricity supply plays in our infrastructure. Essentially what we have here is that the other elements of the infrastructure are all dependent on having an electric power supply. So that failure of the electric power supply would cause huge problems elsewhere in the infrastructure. There are different types of dependency that can arise. So functional dependency is where <coughs> there's a use of common functions by different elements in the infrastructure. So we may have uh, a system where uh, different elements of the infrastructure rely on uh, a software service doing some of their computation. So their dependency is linked through that service. Closely related to that is informational dependency, where different elements of the infrastructure rely on the same information. So energy planning, for example, electricity and gas supply is dependent on information about the likely weather conditions in, across a country. Another type of dependency is where different elements of the infrastructure are controlled from the same location or, or locations which are physically close to each other. So that if there's a problem in that location, such as a failure of the electricity supply, it doesn't just affect one element of the infrastructure, it affects all of them that are controlled from that location. This is closely related to the notion of geospatial dependencies, where components are physically close to each other. So elements that are located next to each other, say, can be affected by the same environmental event, such as a flood or a fire. It may be the case in, in completely different infrastructure elements that they, there are parts of that which have the same purpose or function. Now, if these reuse components from a, a software supplier that gather information from sensors, say, and, and amalgamate this, they, these, these infrastructure elements are actually dependent through these components. If there is a a design failure or a programming failure in these components, 
then it affects different elements of the infrastructure. Finally, it may be the case that different policies, or rather the same policy, affects different parts of the infrastructure. So that in the event of a change of that policy by government, say, it's not just one thing that's affected, it's all of the supplies, particularly say energy would be a good example here, where there's a change in energy policy, it's all, it's all affected. A consequence of dependencies between infrastructure elements is that we sometimes get what's called cascade failure. Now, cascade failure occurs where we have a failure in one part of the infrastructure and that ripples through to affect other elements of the infrastructure which then fail and which can ripple through and so on and so forth. So we have a cascade, we have a, a sequence of failures in different infrastructure elements occurring. So take, take for example a situation which, which happened some years ago in, in, in England, which was that there was a very heavy rain, the rivers were very high and the flood defences which were protecting an electricity distribution centre failed. This caused that distribution centre to go offline. It had to be shut down for safety reasons, which led to a, a power outage across quite a widespread local area. So we had a cascade from an infrastructure failure in the hydrological system to a failure in the electricity system. Now within that infrastructure area, there was an ISP that provided internet services across the whole country. And it, an electricity failure, they were nowhere near the flooding, but the failure in electricity meant that they had to shut down. And that meant that people who were geographically very distant from the flooding were affected by the failure of the flood defences. When we have these cascade failures and we have mutual dependencies, uh, these can be particularly difficult to recover from. So we have a situation, a very common situation, where communication systems depend on power being available. However, restoring power in an area often relies on there being communication systems available so that the people involved in, in repairing the power supply system can communicate with each other, can tell them what's going on, can, for safety reasons, can say when parts of the system are and are not available for powering up. This picture is a, a city in the north of England called Carlisle where there was uh, an example of that mutual dependency problem. There, were, there was major flooding in the area, unprecedented. Uh, no one had ever seen floods of this scale before. And these uh, knocked out the electricity supply to the city. And this made it extremely difficult to restore electricity in the city. All of the contingency plans had not taken this into account. Fortunately, there was one mobile phone mast which was unaffected because it was on a high building and that was the only way in which the emergency services could communicate to start to restore the services to the city. Infrastructure dependencies are particularly affected by single points of failure. Remember, a single point of failure is where when one thing goes wrong, it can affect the whole system. And we've all heard tales of the uh, building work going on and a digger digging up a cable and knocking out the, both the communications and the electricity supply in an area. This, this is a very common kind of mutual dependency where we put the all of the cables serving an area into the same cable duct. Bridges are often single points of failure because as well as transport, they also, they also carry the power and communication cables across a stretch of water. Another type of mutual dependency, which, have, which I introduced earlier uh, <clears throat> when I talked about uh, the types of dependency, is the notion of shared system components. 
where different elements of the infrastructure use the same system components to do the same thing, although these elements of the infrastructure may be completely different. We may have software components from the same supplier used for data collection in a sensor network, display, control, and if there is a failure in these components, then this affects all of a different infrastructure elements. It has a widespread effect across the infrastructure. The consequences for dependability of the dep dependencies between different parts of the infrastructure is that we can't consider infrastructure elements to be independent. And a lot of the work that's done on dependability is based around that assumption that failures in one place do not are, are independent of failures in something else. So we can focus on the local system and not worry about failures that are happening outside of that system. Well, that is certainly not true for critical national infrastructures. When we look at the dependability and when we try and assess the dependability, the safety, the availability, the security and the reliability of one part of the infrastructure, we need to think about how that's affected by the dependability of other infrastructure elements, particularly power, because power, as we saw from that diagram er earlier, is central to almost everything. And of course, dependencies may be unknown. It doesn't follow that we know that the same software components are reused. So we there's a great deal of uncertainty in our dependability assessment, because there are things which we simply don't know and which may affect the overall dependability of the system. Consequently, when we're building a dependable infrastructure, we need to make contingencies. We need to plan for failures elsewhere. We need to provide emergency power supplies, emergency communications, means of recovery from failure in the event of failure in external systems. Infrastructures, infrastructure elements, have a complex ownership structure. They're owned by governments and different companies. And this influences the overall dependability of the system. There are dependencies between different parts of the infrastructure. Power provides is essential, for example, to almost everything. And we cannot think about system dependent dependability in an isolated way. We have to consider the dependencies and the relationships between different infrastructure elements when we're considering its overall dependability. You can download the slides that accompany this video from my SlideShare account.